Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. I'm quite excited today to bring you this particular segment of Points of Light Radio. Right? We, we've shed light on so many different organizations, but today, uh, I guarantee you, you've never heard of the organization that I'm going to be covering. That particular organization is called the Fraternal Order of Maui, right? So, like I said, I, I can guarantee you, you've never heard of them before. Uh, most people haven't anyway. But uh, just to give you some insight, the Fraternal Order of Maui is a fraternal order and social club founded in 2005. The order uses the the Maui statues of Rapa Nui as a theme. One of its goals is to preserve the history of and the artifacts from the closed Kahiki Supper Club in Columbus, Ohio. Now, some described the group as a cult within a cult when discussing the modern Tiki revival. The members are often fans of tiki culture. Even though the group participates in many public events, the organization operates like a secret society, and many of its members only identify themselves using aliases. Leaders of the group use obscure titles that combine words from several Polynesian languages. I'll allow my guests to shed a little more light on that. And my guest for this particular segment of Points of Light Radio is Jeffrey Bronner. Mr. Bronner is the, I hope I say this right, I sincerely do. I apologize if I don't, but the Tagata Eo of the Fraternal Order of Maui. Okay. Now, this really sounds both exciting and intriguing. It really does. Uh, right? I, I'm actually really looking forward to this, like I said. So let's have Mr. Bronner shed some light on the Fraternal Order of Maui. But are you still hungry for the light? Are you still searching for knowledge? Then just trim your lamp. And follow me after this. Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Mr. Bronner. How are you, Stan? Welcome to Points of Light Radio. Good to be here. Yeah, you are a member of the Fraternal Order of Maui. Maui. Uh, Maui, yes. So why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself, first of all? Sure. Um, I, uh, you know, I pay the bills as an IT professional during the day, so that's what, that's what my day job is, and I've been at that for a long time, and it's nice to have something to do in addition to that. And this organization is certainly one of the things I put my time into because it's social and it has a service component. So I enjoy that, as does my wife, who's also a member. Okay. And your title with the Fraternal Order of Moe is Tegata A.O. So, uh, I hope I said that right, first of all, but uh, what are your duties in that role? So that role, it's the, the currently the highest rank in the order. And so I have sort of two key jobs there. One is I am the president of the board of directors for the organization, the incorporated organization that exists legally. Um, and I'm also the most senior person in the, what's called the Temple of the Sacred Five, which is our ruling council. And so, you know, that means I span both the 
day-to-day organizational things around finances and, and legal status, and then also organizational things around ritual and, and uh, chartering chapters and things like that. Okay. And tell us about the Fraternal Order of Moe. So we're, you know, compared to a lot of the organizations that I've seen talked about on your show, the, you know, we're pretty new at this. We've only been around, you know, about 18 years, coming up on 18 years in January. So uh, we're, you know, a new organization. We've been growing slowly but steadily. You know, slow growth is actually part of our model. We're not trying to be gigantic. Um, And, you know, it started as an organization in Ohio, but fairly quickly, you know, expanded to people who were interested in some of the same topics. A lot of people in our organization are interested in Polynesian pop and mid-century modern art and things like that and related, you know, music, performance, history. Um, And so it's spread around among people who were interested in that. Uh, So we overlap a lot with people who go to a lot of a lot of events that are themed this way. Not everybody wants to be in an organization, but that is often where we're recruiting people. So uh, that's, you know, that's sort of the short version of the history. But, you know, it certainly grew very quickly from a small group of people in Ohio to a national organization. And we are, you know, we are coast to coast now uh, in selected places. So do you have a degree system with uh, the Fraternal Order of Moe? Well, we don't use the word degrees, but we do have levels of membership. You know, if you wanted to equate it to degrees, certainly the first degree would be what we would call an initiate, which is someone who's seeking membership and has started that process. Um, And then when someone completes that process and becomes a member, they're referred to as a fellow or fellow Moe. Um, So you could view that as a degree. And then there are people who, after a period of time in the organization, when they showed a level of commitment, are selected for status of Honui Moai, uh, which is, you know, technically not a degree above, but certainly you have to be a fellow before you can be Honui. So, you know, there is a step process there. Okay. And now are there plans to open membership in other parts of the world or, or further expansion, shall we say? Yeah, I mean, we're certainly talking about that. We have an inch, a group of interested people who've reached the first step of the process, just as becoming members um, who are in Canada. So we have some people in two cities in Canada. They haven't reached the point where they form chapters. And I should explain, we have a model where individual people can join in an area where we don't have a chapter and have a somewhat of a membership at large status. And those people, you know, are called, we call them Tangane, sort of wandering Moai. And so those people will recruit in their area and eventually reach a critical mass and perhaps choose to form a chapter. And so Canada is sort of the next frontier for us. And we've got interested people up there. We'll see where that goes. Uh, We haven't really talked about going outside North America, but anything's possible. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people like that culture. It's interesting. Where does your, when and where does your chapter meet? So I'm in the New England chapter. Um, Chapters are asked to meet at least monthly. Okay. Um, We move around the region because obviously New England's a pretty large area. So some of us might drive, you know, three hours to get to a meeting sometimes. So these are social events. They might even be at a, they might be held in a member's home. We might uh, have a space in a restaurant or some other club, Um, but they, you know, they combine a business meeting and social time. So, you know, you're not just driving to a meeting, you know, meeting for 40 minutes and then going home. You know, you're typically going spending 45 minutes to an hour at a business meeting, but then two to three hours of social time with the other members who traveled to that. Um, and then, you know, either returning home or, you know, depending on the distance, maybe even staying the night and then returning home. I, you know, my house is pretty far north in New England, so I have a little bit farther to go than some folks. Okay. And, and is there a, like a ritual to the meetings, the way you open them, the way you close them? Yeah, there's some standard stuff there. It's not, I wouldn't say the meeting rituals are particularly ornate, but, um, you know, there is, there is a process there that's meant to tie people back to some of our values and chapters have their own variations that they introduce locally. So there's some things my chapter does that another chapter would not. Um, And, you know, one of the things that's really interesting when I am somewhere else in the U.S. is to attend a chapter meeting with another chapter and kind of see what they're doing differently. And, you know, sometimes there's good ideas there that are worth borrowing. 
Okay. And what's the dress code for the meetings? Is this regalia you're wearing now? Is that part of it? Um, for a meeting, there's no formal dress code. Uh, Honoree will certainly typically wear a fez. Um, might depend on the circumstances. Uh, officers will certainly wear symbols of office. Uh, Hawaiian shirts in our group are pretty popular, so you'll certainly see a pattern shirt like this most of the time. Um, there's also a variety of pins and other things people might wear, um, but there isn't a formal dress code. You know, we're a pretty informal organization. Try not to take ourselves too seriously. The goal is to get together, have some fun, get some business done. Um, a lot of our members have not been in fraternal organizations before. So they're, you know, the, we tend to certainly some have, but we have a lot of people who've never been in a fraternal organization before. So they tend to view ritual and things like that a little differently. And so we save a lot of the more complex ritual for special occasions. Okay. Uh, and so what are the dues for to belong? Uh, dues are pretty low because right now we're not supporting, you know, buildings. You know, yeah. if we had building, you know, we certainly would aspire to get to that point. But right now, dues are fairly low. For most chapters, it would be under $100 a year to be a member. Um, and that would include the, the, what, the money that goes back to the national organization that pays for certain things. Um, so it's not meant to be expensive. You know, we've tried, we didn't even have dues for the first, you know, almost five years of our organization. Wow. It was, you know, it didn't have any cost at all. And obviously there was a point where there was a need for a treasury. So we've tried to keep that not a barrier to membership. Um, you know, I think certainly there are things that people aspire to in terms of the growth of the organization that would start to cause, require us to either substantially increase our membership or our dues or a little bit of both. But we're not there yet, not after this amount of time. Well, how long have you been a member? You said it's been around for 18 years. Uh, so the organization formed in 2005 and I joined in 2008. So uh and you know a lot of you know we take in members every year but you certainly have you know a lot of people like me who came in fairly early on and have really had the experience of building the whole thing from scratch uh you know so that's one i think one thing that it does attract people to the organizations because there isn't a long history there there's still a lot of stuff we're creating you know we may realize we need to have a reason to create a ritual for some purpose and there's an opportunity for people to be involved in those those plans and that experimentation uh, without being told, well, this is what we've been doing for 200 years and that's the yeah. ritual. You know, they can actually create one and, and have input on that. And what drew you to the Fraternal Order of Moy? Uh, friends in the organization. Uh, you know, I'd say we were looking for a social outlet and, you know, this overlapped with a number of our friends and some of the activities we're involved in. So it was a nice match. Um, gave us a reason to expand our social network locally and nationally. You know, I have a lot of friends now that I didn't have, you know, 15 years ago. And uh, so I can travel to a lot of parts of the country now and visit with friends that I now see all the time. And, you know, so that's a lot of fun. And it is nice to be able to go to, because obviously we, we all have an interest in tiki bars and things like that. And so if I'm going to a city that has stuff like that, I can usually talk to people who live locally and even, you know, meet them and have them show me around the town. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a big piece of it for us is that social aspect. Yeah. And the, uh, so that's what it's done for you. What do you think it could do for potential members? I think like a lot of organizations are trying to give people an outlet where they feel like they have a little bit of a sense of purpose. Like I said, we don't try not to take ourselves too seriously, but the phrase we often use is fun with a purpose, right? You know, we could just plan an event and have a party, but our events have fundraising components and service components. I mean, we do see people that are attracted to the idea of getting together with a like-minded group of people that they like socially, but then can do something with in terms of community service or something like that. And we see people do a huge range of stuff, right? We've seen people raise money and do a polar plunge, you know, up in Lake Champlain in the middle <laughs> of winter, which, you know, um, we've seen people, you know, raise money for a traditional fundraising walk and form a team. We've seen people pick up trash on the side of the highway in their chapter area. Um, but, you know, I think that's shared purpose and having the opportunity to do those things with people that they, that they get along with and enjoy spending time with is nice. Well, Mr. Bronner, I appreciate your time today and taking the time out to uh, 
meet with me and my listeners and viewers. And I wish you and your organization all the best, sir. Thanks. I appreciate it. We'll hopefully be around for a while. Thank you, sir. Jeffrey Bronner, brothers and sisters. Shedding some light on the Fraternal Order of Moe. And I stand corrected on that. It's the Fraternal Order of Moe, not the Fraternal Order of Maui. Um, that's how so many of us pronounce it these days. And I'm glad he corrected me on that. That uh, interview, I might add, it was a long time in the making. It took a while for us to get touch base and everything. But those are the lengths I go to for you here on Points of Light Radio. And wasn't it interesting learning about the Fraternal Order of Moe? Had you ever heard of them before? Like I hadn't until I started doing my research for this podcast. Um, and as I said, I immediately started trying to reach out to them because it's, it's a, uh, you know, want to learn a little more, don't we? And some things I personally took away from this interview. First of all, it's wonderful to study and shed light on some of these older and more storied organizations, but it's also refreshing, isn't it, to, you know, learn and shed light on these, you know, these developing and growing and exciting newer fraternal organizations, isn't it? If you recall, uh, when I did the interview on the Masonic Order of Athelstan, I mean, that was, you know, it was actually really exciting to learn about that. I, I you know, and I, I'm, I'm enjoying, this is one of the many I guess you could say perks for on a personal level, one of the perks of, you know, doing these interviews is and felt and having this fellowship is that you really learn a a lot, don't you? And, you know, but uh, the other thing I, I kind of, that that I, I actually found interesting was the fact that most, as he said, that most, of the new members have never had any part in fraternalism before. That's interesting, isn't it? Right. And it's actually good in many ways because you get that fresh canvas to work with, right? They're coming in there with a lot of fresh thinking and new ideas. That's just wonderful. And I'd love to revisit this organization, the Fraternal Order of Moe in the future. However, that's all the time I have for today. But before I go, as usual, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light Radio store where you can go and purchase some points of light radio merchandise as well as some other merchandise from a fraternal fraternal merchandise from the various different fraternal organizations that we cover here but brothers and sisters i'm sorry to part with you but until we meet again As I always say, just step into the light.